You all right there, pal? I'm just walking Reggie today. A little bit of a training session for me and uh, Reg on our own. Which is why we've not brought Chancy Pants with us. Because uh, Chancy's a big distraction for Reg. And uh, he doesn't listen, but... Reg! <whistles> Reg! He's starting to learn the whistle, look. Good boy. Good boy. Go on then, go on. Go and play again. Go on then. He wants me to go into the woods. Uh, but I'm reluctant to go that way. Because that's not the way we're going. So we're here at Bevercoat Old Pit Head, effectively. This, as you can see, used to be the car park. So I've got a little bit of mining memorabilia on my keys here. So this is what they call uh, a token. And as you can see, the number was 1984, it's not the year. And what they'd do is give these to the miners as they went underground. Uh, I don't know too much more about them, to be fair. But I saw this one on eBay and I couldn't re resist picking it up. So this is where we are, Bevercoats Colliery. I'm not sure what year it was closed down. But I'm pretty sure it's been shut for well over two decades. Maybe even four and as you can see, nature is starting to reclaim the land. This car park was a lot bigger than this, of course. But a lot of it now is under all this new growth. And uh, you can still make out a lot of the original kind of uh, layout of the place. So this being the car park, of course. And then if we come across here... What you found, boy? I wonder if he's just come across a deer. Shut up. Because there are deer in and around this wood. <laughs> you excited about it? Oh, it's a, it's a bloke. Oh, it's another chap walking his doggos. So we'll take Reggie this way then. Reg. Reg! And we'll go up here. So yeah, as I was saying, you can kind of see a lot of the original kind of uh, curbing and roadways. And if we go across into the uh, the open area where I imagine they processed up... Reg! No! Where they processed a lot of the coal. Uh, there are still some... There's a road, look. There are still some train lines where they would have put the coal onto the back of uh, of trains of course to ship it all away and this spot is just next to uh, Bevercoats Nature Reserve which is basically the the spoil heap from uh, from the mining uh, activities over the years let's have a look at that There's some really interesting structures. Ah, housing cables and pipe work, look. So I imagine someone's been along here to see whether these pipes are worth digging up and pinching, I'd imagine. Uh, but yeah, the nature reserve is just to the back of us over there. It's a big, obviously, man-made hill. And um, you do get the occasional dog walker straight onto the old pit top here. I'm not exactly sure where the shaft was sunk, but I do know that it was backfilled and capped um, when they knocked down the uh, the headgear. Uh, there's a video on YouTube somewhere of it being all taken down, but uh, I can't, I don't think I'll be able to find a link to it to post on this video. Uh, and also, an interesting little fact before we go. Um, <laughs> this area in the past has been host 
to several illegal raves. Uh, none yet during the pandemic, but there have been a few in the past, and they've been that loud that we were able to hear them from town, from Retford, which is a fair few miles away. Oh, look at that. That's a dangerously deep shaft. I mean, dangerously deep. No, get out. I can't believe someone's taken the top off of that, to be fair. That must be 20 feet, if not more down there. Yeah. That's the first time I've seen one that deep so far, so might head back to the car and just keep Reggie. Reg, come here, mate, on a relatively short lead. Yeah, I'm going to put the camera down now because I don't know if there's any more deep holes. So I'll get hold of him. So here's another little example. All this concrete here has been smashed up and broken up because it housed, as you can see there, some of the old iron tracks. So people have smashed this up to get at the metalwork and it's all been taken away, pulled out and taken away. And if we walk across this way a little bit more, you'll not see today because of the amount of fog that there is. But there was a way bridge over there as well, I imagine, for coal lorries coming in and out, taking taking the coal away to maybe uh, smaller vendors. The bulk of it, of course, going out by train. So there were... All this section that we're coming to over here is where where all the main tracks were, essentially. A couple of sleepers here, look. And I don't know if you can see just over there in the distance. Like I say, it's really cloudy. But there's a bridge there. And the trains obviously used to come in under the roadway. Uh, underneath that bridge. Ha uh ha! -huh. hear that so another deep deep shaft underneath this big concrete block that someone's obviously put on there to stop people falling down it really quite frightening when you when you stood above it and you can hear the water dripping down into the darker bits anyway I'm gonna head just through here towards where those poplar trees are and the cars just over there somewhere so um yeah, just a little insight into me and Reggie having a little bit of a walk today. Try not to talk too loudly because I don't want to frighten all the wildlife off. We've come across all sorts. Like I said, deer, rabbits, squirrels and all different types of bird. So I think that'll be me signing off, folks. And, uh, well, I'll see you later. Uh, just before we go, look, here it is, what's left of the way bridge, it's been heavily vandalised, and uh, people have tried bashing it down to cave the roof in, as you can see, there's the ramp on, two massive uh, concrete devices, I'm sure they'd have had some type of um, mechanical uh, scale load kind of thing underneath, load cells, and then, yeah, drive off. Anyway, that's it, folks. Come on, Reg.